Welcome to the U.S. Impact Survey video. This tutorial is designed to help public libraries use the data they've collected through the U.S. Impact Survey in their conversations with funders, advocates, potential partners, and others. Our goal is to help you better explain the benefits of public access technology in public libraries and what libraries need in order to provide better services to patrons. This video will explain how to collect and organize data to prepare for important budget conversations. It will demonstrate how librarians can put these principles into action when meeting with chief executives or in presentations to city councils and other organizations. With generous support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the U.S. Impact Survey is available to all public libraries to use in their own data collection, evaluation, and advocacy efforts. The most important time for a library to tell its story is during the annual budget process. Leaders must tell their stories and back them up with data. Regardless of the administrative structure under which a library system operates, a legislative or oversight body must approve the library's annual budget and justify the use of taxpayers' money. Some library constituents may feel that libraries are compelling social goods and should be funded because it's the right thing to do. However, in this era of declining public resources, libraries are competing against many services that provide important social benefits valued by taxpayers. One of the most critical services provided by libraries is public access to the essential tools used for getting a job, interacting with government and businesses, learning, and connecting socially. With data, libraries must connect public access to meaningful public outcomes, like employment, emphasizing both how and what the library accomplished, as well as why funding levels matter. In exploring the use of data from the U.S. Impact Survey and other sources, we'll examine the overall fundamentals of public sector budgeting in order to understand the context within which data, as well as the stories from your patrons, can increase the effectiveness of your budget presentation. We'll explore three elements of a public budget. One, the line item budget that contains the budget numbers, revenues, and expenditures. Two, cost center budgeting, a way of more closely aligning the budget numbers with specific services. And three, performance budgeting, the use of output and outcome data to demonstrate the value of library services for the community. In addition, we'll discuss how stories from your patrons can bring the data to life and other strategies to enable you to make your best case. Helping us are two library systems on opposite sides of the United States. My name is Skip Ald. I'm library administrator here at Anne Arundel County Public Library. We're based in Annapolis, Maryland. We have 15 branch libraries and a headquarters building. We serve 537,000 people who live between Baltimore, Maryland, Washington, D.C., and kind of along the Chesapeake Bay. We're home to the U.S. Naval Academy, St. John's College, and the National Security Agency. I'm Maggie Buckholtz. I'm the library director of the Burlington Public Library in Washington State. We are about 2,800 miles from Anne Arundel County. We are located north of Seattle. To the west of us is Puget Sound, and to the east is the Cascade Mountains. Our city has about 9,000 people. The next three chapters will review different budget and performance data. Anne Arundel County Public Library and Burlington Public Library will outline how they use the different types of data to tell the full story of their respective libraries. For most people, budgeting simply isn't fun. Without a savvy budget strategy and the technical skills to implement it, the budget process is even less maneuverable. Public agencies struggle to obtain the resources they need to provide the valuable services to which they have committed. There are different levels of budgeting that public administrators, including library directors, need to understand. The line item budget is the most basic form of budgeting. Presenting this basic budget information is a requirement and typically only conveys what the library will spend as compared to the previous year. Nevertheless, the line item budget presentation is an important starting point as it allows presenters and users the ability to identify areas in need of further explanation. The Anne Arundel County Public Library fiscal year 2012 budget totals $18.5 million. This is an apparent increase of $3 million from the previous fiscal year. We go on to explain in our budget text that this increase is merely a transfer of the cost of materials from the capital budget to the operating budget, reflecting a change in philosophy in how such expenses are recorded, not an actual increase in expenses. 
Similarly, a first look at our personnel cost line item of $14 million shows that we're down $22,000, but that alone does not explain why. Later in the budget, we explain that we eliminated eight full-time positions this year, but those savings were offset by increases in health, insurance, and pension costs. A major problem with line item budgets is that they don't convey any meaning behind the numbers. Is an $18 million budget for Anne Arundel County Public Library high or low? One can only know in comparison to something else. A common approach is to show expenses relative to a community's population, as Anne Arundel did in this slide from a town hall presentation. Here the library is benchmarking per spending against peer library systems in the state of Maryland. Anne Arundel County Public Library's $18 million budget translates into $32 per resident of the county, which ranks eighth amongst the libraries in Maryland. Another way you can put your budget in context is to reduce the large budget numbers down to a size that people can understand. That's what Skip Ald, the library administrator for Anne Arundel County, Maryland, did in this informal work session. He made a sophisticated comparison of how much the library costs each resident. We do have a full range of things, even beyond what I've talked about so far, and we can get into that later. But to meet this full range of needs in our community, we are requesting a budget, really a flat-funded budget for this coming year of $18.4 million. Now I want you to think about this. $3.7 million of that budget will come from sources other than local taxes. Of the $14.7 million in local taxes, about 20% is paid for by the business community, which leaves an annual cost per resident for all of our 540,000 people who live in Anne Arundel County of $22.53 per year, or about $1.88 per month. So if you think about that, that's a tremendous value that we're getting and that we're providing, that, that our community is getting for the library services and that the library is, is providing with this level of funding. The, the whole world of information has changed. It used to be books and magazines and that kind of thing and television and all of that. With the world of the internet, with the world of computers, the world has changed immensely. And if the libraries were not there for this major segment of our community, for really our whole community, just imagine what the world would be like if, if we weren't also providing this kind of service. I want you to think of the value of $1.88 per month as compared with what you pay for cable services, for internet access, for your cell phone data plans, or for something like Netflix. And through the library, you get just most of those things and beyond. So keep that in mind. What is your library's overall budget? What are the underlying drivers? For example, Anne Arundel County experienced a high rate of growth in pension and insurance costs which were beyond the library's control. In what ways can you put your budget in a context that enables residents and decision makers to more readily understand the value of their investment in the library? second budgeting method, cost center budgeting, separates the overall line item budget into the different programs or cost centers of the library. It helps the library and its funders understand the various library programs and services as well as what they cost. Practitioners commonly refer to cost center budgeting as program budgeting. Library's cost centers could be organized by facility or by specialized program, such as public access technology, children's services, etc. There is no single right way to structure cost centers. Their creation should be based on what provides the most meaningful information for a library system within that library's specific economic and political environment. Try to isolate the costs of the public access technology services in particular. And if you're not doing that right now, if you just have a budget that shows all of your staff and, and all of your resources, it might be a good idea at this time to do an activity-based budget that isolates the costs of your public access resources so that you can really show a direct connection between those inputs, the outputs that you create in terms of public access technology and the outcomes that you're intending for your patrons. Is your budget allocated into different cost centers? What are they? If not, what could they be? 
Can you identify the cost for public access and other programs that are considered high value in your community? The most important form of budgeting is performance budgeting. The goal of performance budgeting is to describe the benefits taxpayers receive for the money they provide for public sector programs and services. In the private sector, there's a direct relationship between the value proposition for a good or service and an individual's decision to pay. Basically, people are willing to pay what they think the good or service is worth to them. On the other hand, in the public sector, the relationship between payment and value received is not a direct one. For example, many taxpayers pay for services that they themselves would never receive. The concept of the free public library makes this challenge more difficult for public libraries, since no public service is actually free. As government at virtually every level downsizes, libraries must demonstrate that the value they provide to their communities justifies the tax resources they utilize. Performance budgeting is the best way for libraries to tell their stories. There are three types of performance data used in describing what a library does. Input measures, output measures, and outcome measures, also known as results or impact measures. To provide context to the numbers, it's helpful to translate them into per capita and time series calculations or other forms to which decision makers can relate. The next two chapters will provide you with an overview of performance measurement terminology and the role it plays in the budgeting process. To provide context to the terms, Anne Arundel County Public Library and Burlington Public Library will share their performance data with you. In Chapter 6, you'll notice that patron activities are divided into seven domains of use. These domains were developed by the U.S. Impact Study as key areas of patron usage that align with the issues tackled by key stakeholders and funders.